I just finished a book so boring that when I went on my Goodreads, I realized I'd read it before several years ago, and it also gave it a two-star rating. Um, so, Welcome to Monsters Among Us by Linda S. Godfrey, which, no lie, I love me a cryptid. I, I love a good mothman, a skunk ape, a, a flat flatwood monster, just give me any cryptid. Somehow, somehow, Miss Godfrey ended up writing a book that was so boring, I had not even realized I'd read it before until I went in to put it in my Goodreads for the year. And it was like, you read this like several years ago. And I think I may have re read the like ebook version, which is why I didn't quite remember the physical copy, I suppose. But the content was so non-memorable that I was able to read this book again and not it not even crossed my mind that I had read the book before. Um, the issue I have with this book is it's boring in a very unique way because it's boring as in she keeps relating these stories mainly about it seems like it seems like canid like wolf men but there's this like connection to astral projection and maybe these things aren't real. And she kind of tries to make it like she's actually reporting these things and making actual documented cases of this. And it's just a lot of not much being said. It's just report after report of, of mists and, and questionable sightings of things and vague pictures of of things in trees that may have been put there by Bigfoot. It's just, and she starts it out with the most boring part, which is the, the dog men part, which you would think would not be boring, but somehow it kind of is. She just, I don't know. I don't know if it's the way that she is trying to relate these stories as sort of a scientific thing that she's doing with them that just makes it so, so dry and almost like and it's not a clinical dry it's not like a scientific dry what I would call that it's just like somehow it's just not interesting it's like listening to a five-year-old tell you a story that you know is probably not true and I'm not saying these people are lying or what they perceive to have seen is not what they think they saw it just the way it's related is so strange like the, the the chapters aren't even you think you're going into one like oh this is going to be talking about like hag women and da, da 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 and then it's just kind of this boring story i don't know how we're having stories that people are telling about seeing these cryptids and other sorts of stuff how it's how it's so dry it's such a unique boringness it, it is so unique in the way that it is boring that I can't, I, I can't even pinpoint. I can't pinpoint because I've read scientific texts and different things like that that are just dry because you're just, they're just spitting out facts and all sorts of stuff. This shouldn't be boring. And the way that this is packaged should not be boring. Look at that. Look at the cover. Look at the cover. This should not be a boring book. And somehow, this is just a rough read. And... Apparently twice I have thought that because when I went back into the Goodreads, I still had, um, I had a two star at that one. I would have give, I was going to give it maybe three stars this one because I thought, well, you know, at least it was well, or it was trying to be organized and whatever. But man, apparently I didn't like it then, still don't like it now and can't remember it. Um, it's so weird because the next book that I'm reading that is also one written by her, I think called I Know What I Saw, much better. It's much more interesting. And I'm not saying that you have to turn this into like some non-scientific cryptid thing where we have to make this legitimate and, and believable so people will not think we're crazy. I'm just saying make it written in such a way that it's not... It doesn't just seem like a bunch of news. It feels like a bunch of newspaper clippings thrown together. That is maybe what I'm I'm feeling here. It's like a a 
collection of newspaper clippings of people's people's sightings of things without a whole lot of commentary on it or explanation or in-depth stuff around it. It's just sort of presented like this file of people's stories. And that just, I don't know, that just doesn't hit. And it's not how the book is presented either. This is, once again, I've had, I have lots of issues with books presenting themselves a certain way and then doing something completely different. And this one is one that kind of like makes itself very, unless she does say firsthand testimony of transfer, transformations and blah, blah, blah. But, and I'm sure this is a publisher thing, that she had nothing to do with the way they packaged this. Because they packaged this like, this is going to be so fascinating. But I know if I put this in a library for high schoolers, they would pick it up because of the cover maybe. But they wouldn't read it. They wouldn't get past the first part because it's just... It's just a collection of newspaper clippings, in in my opinion. And that's not me denigrating uh, Linda Godfrey in any way, because I think she does a fine job of trying to research. And according to the other book I'm reading, she's she's a decent writer. So I'm not sure what's going on with this. Like, if it was an attempt to be scientific and the publisher just went crazy and decided that they were going to try to market it as this book of crazy cryptids and stuff because the cover and the presentation does no favors for her trying to make this like a legitimate thing because you have the kind of exploitative cover and the content is not quite matching up and the lay like I said the layout doesn't help either because this like astral pro projection wolfman is kind of a weird place to start. I maybe would have started with Bigfoot. I had an issue with another book that, I think it's called The Unexplained, which was by the same guy who wrote um, that Ghostland. Um, he started out that one with his weakest argument. And I was like, why didn't, because I didn't like it until I got to the second argument that he made about a different thing. I was like, why didn't you flop that around and start out with that? So I... I don't know. I don't know what to think about this, of why why this is marketed this way, why it was created this way, what the deal, what the deal was with that. The other thing I finished was the one I talked about before, uh, Sam Hogan's Waypoints, which is his travel across the Scottish, um, whatever the trail is called, um, up there in the... In, Scotland and he goes across it and he kind of he does he'll do one part about talking about the hiking and one part about talking about his life as becoming an actor and yada da, da, da. Um, again for a kind of autobiography situation this is blessedly boring um, I, I suppose somebody who is really into Outlander and really into Sam Hogan would have been and that's what I saw on Goodreads when I was looking at the reviews of it. It has a really, really high um, rating. It's like a four or something or other on Goodreads, which surprises me a little bit because his writing is not... There's nothing really fascinating about it. He's a decent writer, but some of his writing I just kind of find... A little bit amateurish, which you expect from an autobiography from somebody who's maybe not using a ghostwriter, but it's kind of, you know, he, he words stuff in certain ways that is kind of an amateurish attempt of writing certain things. It's not bad, but it's not like a polished um, fiction writer or anything like that. So for this to have like such high ratings, I'm assuming it's by fans of his? I don't know. I didn't really look too much in depth on what the ratings were other than people saying, oh, it was fascinating look into his life, da 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 da. Uh, maybe? But his life it, it isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, he, he, he just was a young guy from Scotland, went to an art school, went to America, got into acting, got... This job on Outlander where suddenly everybody knows him now. It, it's really, really 
not a wild life. It's not like my family traveled around and I was on safari and we were a bungee jumping out of airplanes. It's nothing really like anything that that way. And even what he's doing in this book is kind of just, and then I hiked, and then it was raining, and it's still raining, and I hated it, and now I have to camp, and now I'm sore, and oh, this hiking, but I feel so liberated, and da-da-da, and I'm just, I, I don't know. I don't know why the ratings were so high. I was like, it's okay. I'd never really read it again, because it's just a guy going about his life, it feels like. Um, so I'm not... I, I guess they, I guess he did what he was trying to do and the publisher did what they were trying to do in, in the fact that the Outlander fans will eat this up, um, with, with this, with this book because it seems like they did. And me, like I said, I've never watched Outlander. I only read the first book. I only vaguely, uh, have any idea what the show w went into, but looking just at this as an autobiography of somebody that I don't really know much about nor care a whole lot about. Um, looking at it as an autobiography, it's just like, eh, it's, <laughs> it is, it's somebody just going about their day. And it, it is, it is the story of a, um, blandly nice man who likes to hike and likes the arts and likes acting going about his life and how things have turned out good for him and how he loves Scotland and all things Scottish. I don't know what else to say about that. And I, and I'm, I guess maybe the rating is so high because going into it, he does not like blast anybody's ideas of who he is or acting or come across as being bratty or horrible or anything like that. He just comes across like a, a decent dude. And maybe that's the why everybody's like just thinking it's wonderful. Uh, for me, it was just sort of, okay, it's a guy on a hike. And he doesn't necessarily make the hike all that interesting. It's just it's just hiking it's it's not like a bill bryson book where he's got humor and a great deal of of all sorts of stuff about the adventures he's on and different things it's just a book about him going on this what he considered a, a very big adventure in the rain and hard and this and that and making a whole book out of it and i i don't know it's not bad. It's not bad by any means. It's also not something I would maybe give kind of like 4.5 stars to either. It's just sort of, meh, it's there. It's there and it's fine. Um, so on those two books, that was an interesting, I don't know what any of that was. There's a book that, like I said, I, it's so boring I did not realize that I'd read it before. And another book that is okay. It, it, it's, it's okay. It's, it's not some juicy autobiography. I actually liked the murder she wrote one more because he actually got into the business and talking about all these like eighties older sitcom stars that he was working with and different things like that. So, um, yeah, that was at least a little more of an interesting look into, into screenwriting and stuff like that. This is, this is just a guy hiking who became an actor and is decently nice. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm moving on to the um, Tom Felton biography, which I've heard some things about. So maybe it'll be more interesting. And are, are we in are we in an era of of fandom autobiographies just being written here, there, and everywhere? Because I'm suddenly just seeing a lot. Of them, and as, I can't figure out if I've just ignored them up until now, or if this really is a thing that we're getting all of these like fandom biographies that people are capitalizing on. Like you're a big name in X Y Z TV show or movie or whatever. Write a book about your life or something about that, and and we will 
publish that to those fans. We will we'll market that to those fans. I remember seeing a lot of autobiographies about people who just like their whole career, like famous actors and stuff like that. Their whole career is sort of, sort of, um, sort of touched upon because they've done a lot. But these are like, to me, almost like really niche actors and, and stuff that I, I wouldn't consider Tom Felton like a big name actor aside from his role in Harry Potter. I really wouldn't consider Sam Hogan that big of a name actor aside from his role in Outlander. And I just feel like I'm seeing these all of a sudden, these like connected to one niche fandom autobiography. And it's like they're trying to, to market that a little. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, like, the Prince Harry one makes a little bit of sense because that's like a messy autobiography that we just sort of expect that, you know, the, the tell-all autobiography. But these niche ones are really interesting to me that they that, that I keep seeing different niche ones. And I don't know if that's a thing or if that's just something I've never noticed before. But uh, we're moving from one to another, so... Uh, we'll see if the next one is a little more interesting than the decently okay um, hiking book by Sam Hogan.